I'm so grateful to have you here on this show because I think you've really not only carved out a space yourself in the human design world, but it seems like you're living your design and, and that's such a beautiful thing to to witness as a fellow projector, if you will, to see somebody that's letting themselves be seen and then recognized because of that. And it just seems like you're flowing so gracefully through through life, really. That's at least what it looks like. So I, uh-huh. I'm just grateful to to have you here today and to learn a little bit more about how you do that and how you help others to to do the same. So thanks for being here. Thank you so much for having me and thank you for that reflection. It's nice to hear. And I know that social media obviously only gives us one little people or like little sense of it, but, um, but yeah, it's been a real journey. So I appreciate that. Yeah. And I, so many questions, but one thing I was listening to another interview you did, and you're talking about how often when we're kids, we really sort of live our designs inherently because we're just showing up that way. Uh, and then you mentioned society sort of molding us. And I was really curious about what type, what type do you think society conditions us to be yeah. generally speaking? I think honestly, generally, it just conditions us out of who we are, because like, I think that I've talked to so many different types that are like all trying to be different things, you know, like, I think that like, I know a lot of projectors I've talked to, I know my experience with this is that I was trying really hard to be a generator. And that's really around like trying to be a doer and keeping up. But like, I've also worked with so many manifesting generators who've been like trying to be manifestors and are just like chasing after things and not waiting for their gut to lead them. And I know some of this terminology will be very new to people, but I think that it's just often away from who we are. You know, I think that like human design reminds us of like how we operate best and how we kind of uniquely are meant to thrive. And we often lean into that very intuitively when we're young. Um, but sometimes then we're like, but is that allowed? Am I like allowed to do it that way? So we, we walk away from it and human design brings us back. But yeah, I've seen, I've seen like so many temptations and like lots of different types, but a lot of resistance towards like our actual way of being. Mm, yeah. And I mean, so for anyone that maybe hasn't heard of human design, what might be a, a short intro I'll link to some episodes that, because I think you explain it really well and there's a lot that you share already so I'll, I'll make sure to link to that so that if someone's listening and they don't have any reference point they can go into that yeah but, um but what might be your way of describing human design and why it's around and why you dove into it yeah so human design is based on your time date and place of birth and it reveals your energetic blueprint and how you're kind of uniquely wired to thrive in business and love and in life. And so specifically around how to best make decisions, create aligned opportunities, collaborate with other people, partner, you know, um, work, just like so much very tactical information. And I think why I fell in love with human design is that I thought it was so practical. Like, even though it can feel very cosmic and that it comes from the stars, like the information it offers us is so grounded and so tactical and like our practices that we can bring into our day-to-day life. And so I, I find that there's a lot of amazing information out there, but often we don't need more information. We just need like the right information at the right time to really inspire transformation in our lives. And I, I find the information human design offers us is so practical, so to the point and has such a kind of transformative impact the minute we start to integrate it. Yeah, beautiful. And I, so you mentioned day, time and place of birth. And I, I get curious there what the differences are between human design and let's say conventional horoscopes or astrology. How, how do those play together or not? Yeah. I mean, honestly, the simplest answer is they're just different systems. Like I think that you know, people assume that I like know a lot about astrology because I do human design and I like definitely don't. And I have done many human design sessions for astrologists and like, I find they can be really supportive, but the information it offers is quite different, but astrology does play a role in human design. So human design really draws from a lot of different systems, astrology, the Kabbalah, the I Ching, um, the chakra system, quantum physics, genetics, so it all kind of like pulls from all these systems to really give us a blueprint to kind of how we operate best. So I would say they're different, but also astrology play, does play a role in human design, but not so much so that you'll be able to be like, oh, I have had my natal chart read and now I know what my human design will say. Often very different, but very supportive. Interesting, because you're gathering that same initial information in some sense. Mm -hmm. right Right? like you're the first thing you're gathering is place of birth time date and that's the same thing you would gather so 
but the algorithm you're putting it in is generating really different things because that's pulling from different pieces. So if you put it into a natal chart, you'll see that wild kind of like, I don't even know how to describe it, you know, versus human design, you put it in and you kind of see this chart of like, you see the chakra system, you see like the Zodiac on the side, you see like um, the Kabbalah, like you see all these little pieces integrated, but they're really kind of different algorithms and different things they're coming into and therefore kind of outputting. Yeah. And so what would you say to somebody that gets their chart for free online? And it's, it, it can be sort of overwhelming. You mentioned just a minute ago, Hey, we have all this information. Sometimes you don't need more information. We just need to integrate some very specific pieces. Specific pieces yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So what would you say to somebody that goes, gets their free chart, looks at it, it's kind of overwhelming. There are all these elements. Now what, yeah. <laughs> right? It's like, there's so much to go down there- so many pathways. Yeah, there, there is so much and like more is not better. Like I find like often the simplest information in, at, in human design is often the most impactful. So like, and the chart is not intuitive. So I would not like get in and be like, how can I understand it? Like if you want to amazing dig deep, but like most people that I talk to don't want to understand the chart. They want to know how they can actually use the information from the chart in their lives, you know? So um, I would start by looking at your type and your strategy and your authority Um, and that's the type is basically how you best use your energy. The strategy will go along with your type. Um, it is around how you can create the most aligned opportunities in your life and your inner authorities around your decision-making. And those can be like quite simple, you know, um, but really powerful. So I'd start with those. And then when you feel kind of ready to dive into know that there are bajillion other layers, but I just want to remind people that human design is not a system to like memorize. It's really one to kind of like embody and integrate. And it's really easy to get in our heads and be like, I want to understand every single gate. And like, I get it. I am that person. And also like, it's kind of meaningless if we're not living it, you know? So just like remembering that and not putting so much pressure on yourself to understand everything at once. Yeah. I love that. I, the interview that it just, I think it just came up today, actually, that I was listening to before we chatted, you were saying something very similar. And I wanted to reinforce that because I think with any system, any self self-discovery or awareness, it's really easy to get bogged down in the system rather than applying whatever system it is that you're using. So I love that advice. Totally. And I'd love to sort of dive into any um, example, but before we do that, I would love to just hear your thoughts on, and not to convince anyone necessarily, but what you would say to someone who thinks maybe human design is, I don't know, woo-woo or out there or generic. Like sometimes I think with horoscopes, what happens is people will say, like you read the horoscopes of every different (laughs) sign and it's like, that could be me, right? Like you could kind of resonate. It feels broad or generic. So what would you say to somebody that, again, not saying that to convince them in any sense, but maybe clarify I guess how, how to interpret things or, yeah, or that there's it. really the basis behind it, you know, that it's not this generic, just platitude. Yeah. Well, two pieces. One is that like, I don't really try to convince people of anything. Like, I think that, you know, it's just, I've tried and, um, and I've discovered it's not the right route because I think that like human design, like my intention is never to like convince people that like, this is true and you must believe it. It's really to like introduce it as a framework and as a tool and to like let them decide if it feels resonant and useful and supportive. And so I always say like the most helpful question to ask yourself is not like, is this true, but is it useful? It's not like I must back it all up. It's like, oh, this actually feels amazing and is really helpful. And I just find like, and I work with a lot of skeptics and like when I position it in that way, they're just like, okay, it's resonating so much. Tell me everything, you know? And so I think just like putting the, giving people the power to be like, it feels good or it doesn't, you know, I honestly have not had many experiences where people are like, that doesn't feel good. Like, I think the magic of human design is that it doesn't tell us anything new. It gives us a language for things we have always felt in our lives very specifically and the tools to step into it. Um, in terms of specificity, there are like a hundred, there, there are bajillion configurations, you know? So like people are incredibly unique. Human design is not a thing where you're like, oh, we have the same chart. You know, it's like, you could have the same type, but there's going to be a lot of distinction. Um, so it is super specific. Um, but I would, you know, it's so funny. It's like, I sometimes will have somebody be like, oh, but like, that's my strategy. Like, doesn't everyone work that way? And, and like everyone else in the room is like, no, you know, like, I think sometimes we can be like, our experience is the universal experience, you know? And so I think that um, you might feel like everyone does it that way, but it's often not because they do. It's often just because, you know, it's worked for you, you know? So. 
Yeah, I like that. It's so true. You figure it's so, that, and I think that's where people in, in my work around leadership development and coaching, it's really people sometimes don't realize their quote unquote superpower or what they're really good at because they think doesn't everyone just know how to do that or isn't or, you know isn't totally. everyone just operating in that way and so we miss a lot in terms of what's special about us I think at least in the work I'm doing because we we have that I guess assumption kind of running totally yeah and it's just like and, and again it can show up in so many different ways it's like we can shy away from it because we stop seeing it as our unique gift or we like expect others to match us. And then we're like really disappointed rather than being like, oh, they might be bring something like really different to the table. What is that thing? Mm, yeah, curiosity, even around you just saying, look, I'm not gonna convince anyone, but ask, is it useful? I think that's also just saying, hey, you know, explore, explore this. I'm not here to force anyone, but explore totally. and consider it. Yeah, so I mean, you. I, I think one thing that I found interesting is that hope other people will but you mentioned you can be the same type as someone but it you embody that or there are different strategies even though you're the same type and we are the same type we're both projectors mm -hmm. um so how how might you like to explore that i'd love to hear how two projectors show up differently does that make sense like what because yeah. we could assume i would assume not knowing that much about human design i'd be like hey we're both projectors so we're both similar and it's you know, wait for the invitation and all those kind of very basic pieces of advice. So what would make us as two projectors different? What would give us those unique pieces? Yeah. So, and, and it's the projector piece is the same. You know, I think that like, we're both what we call energy projectors and there are actually three different kind of categories of projectors, which like, again, not the first piece that I recommend diving into. So like we share we share the fact that like both of us are really meant to be like leaders and teachers and guides and like really offer the gift, a gift to the world through our perspective and how we see. And it's not about how, how much we do or how hard we work. And we both might find that like our energy naturally ebbs and flows. And we do share a strategy. Like our strategy is both to be invited in and recognized. So to really invest our energy in the places where we feel the most deeply seen and known and, and making ourselves visible and letting the world know that we exist um, and really kind of trusting which invitations feel right. So that's where we share a lot. Then when we start to dig deeper, like if we dig deeper into our decision-making, we're the opposite. You're what we call a splenic, tune into your intuition decision maker. I'm an emotional wait for clarity, which basically means you're meant to be super spontaneous and impulsive. Yeah. And as soon as an instinctive hit comes, you're meant to act on it. I cannot, I have a very strong intuition in the moment. I'm not meant to trust it. I meant to trust it over time. I'm not, I don't mean not trust, like my intuition is wrong. It just means that like taking my time to feel into things and sleeping on things is always correct for me because like it allows me to feel into things from so many different angles and really land on what's correct. So whereas I would encourage you to be spontaneous and impulsive, I would encourage me to just be incredibly patient and like give myself 24, 48, 72 hours. That's one piece. Another piece is around definition, how we best process information. You're what we call a single independent. I am split collaborative. It basically means like you're super independent. You know, you might love just having space to be in your own kind of flow and not be disrupted by other people. And also really important for you to be in relationships where your independence is honored, you know, and people like really don't disrupt that. Do you feel that independent nature within you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Which getting, getting married is one of those moments where you're like, okay, what, how does this work now? For sure. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, again, it's not about not being in partnership. It's just being in partnership in a way where somebody's like not making you wrong for like, I want you to need me more. It's like, they're just like honoring how independent you are. Whereas I like really my wholeness comes like from being around others. And so I've learned like, whenever I feel stuck, I need to go be around other people's energy and kind of allow that to activate me in a new way. Um, there are so many other pieces beneath that. You know, I think that like we all have areas in our design where we are most sensitive to other people's energy. We call these our open centers. You have six of them. I have two of them. You know, we have our, our profile, like which is around how we best manifest our purpose. You and I are both very hermity, but you've got this very kind of practical problem solving leader nature. And I'm more like a kind of role model, just like taking the higher view. Like it's just, it's, it's different vibes, you know? So I think that like, again, our type is such a beautiful anchor to our design, but there's so many kind of webs that go out from there that kind of really reveal more specific parts. Does that make sense? 
Yeah, absolutely. I love some of those clarifications. Yeah. And I think that even answers further the other question around, okay, it's, it's not just these main types, right? There's so many subcategories totally. and elements that really flush it out and make it unique, even if two people are projectors, for example. And I exactly. think, exactly. I mean, not that we're here to talk about astrology. I think astrology does that to some degree with the planets and things. So I'm not trying to yeah. make astrology yeah. Uh, bad or wrong in any way, just, but it's interesting to say, I think at first glance, things can seem like there are these categories and we easily figure them out. We love that as humans, right? Like we love to kind of, okay, I know, I know totally. what this is about and simplify. Um, but what you explained absolutely clarifies right. and all that piece around sensitive to others energy. I know you mentioned open centers and I'm very open. <laughs> so, and, and for you, there's certain parts, what would you say to people about, we'll all have different open centers but how do we manage that because that's something for me personally I definitely struggle with where it's like depending on who I'm around and we know this is humans whoever we're around like we really pull from that environment or the people yeah and can get super kind of swayed and I find that I find that challenging to stick to what it is that I want or need or what feels right so how do we how do we approach those open open centers so the, the areas that are white in our design, so if you all pull up your chart, and I'm sure we can cl- include a link in the show notes, but you can look it up at humandesignblueprint.com. You'll see, not inevitably, but very likely that like some of the chart, some of the shapes will be white. And those are what we're talking about when we talk about open centers. And so the areas that are white in our design are the areas where we are the most sensitive to other people's energy. And, and these are like probably some of the most challenging areas in our design, but they're also the sources of our greatest wisdom. And so my biggest recommendation for people is to kind of really start to explore and discover what it looks like to live in the shadow and the wisdom of each of those open centers. So they can kind of start to become aware of how to actually use it and not get lost in it. So like an example for you would be, is there one open center where you're just like, this one really gets me? I, I don't know them off by... <laughs> I don't know them off my heart, so I don't. Okay. So So one example is you have what we call an open root center. This would be true if the very bottom shape in your design is white. And so it means that you are very sensitive to other people's stress. And you might sometimes kind of have an unrealistic sense of timing where you apply a sense of urgency to anything and everything. It's like, this must happen right now because once it happens, I'll be free. But like, once you do the thing, like the next thing will show up. And so the sure. shadow for you is like being in an endless hurry, taking on everyone else's stress, <laughs> amplifying it, kind of burning out your adrenals, like just being in this very frenetic state. The wisdom, the lesson that you're here to learn is that even though you feel pressure, it doesn't mean that everything deserves your urgency and everything is to happen right now. And so my advice for you is when you start to notice yourself rushing, whether it's like at the grocery store or through a deck or whatever, like ask yourself like, is this thing worth hurting for? And just check in about it. Because the thing is like for you, it's like you can be fast when you want to be fast, but not everything deserves your urgency. And so like just bringing awareness to that. And honestly, like you're here to learn how to like slow down and allow ease and intention into your life. And you're here to teach other people how to do the same, you know? And so like, I would say the open centers are like beautiful journeys that we're on and understanding what the the spectrum can be is a beautiful way to kind of keep us on track and like continually learning in that journey. I love that you bring, first of all, clarity, but then also a question to presence us because the the premise of the whole thing is, hey, let's live this design, right? Like, let's really live. And so open centers are a journey that we get to go on and understand ourselves better. And then we can use these questions to check in. And I think that's so powerful because then we bring it to our day to day, which is the whole, that's the whole Whole point, point. right? Like live this thing. So yeah, amazing. it's a really cool area in partnership too, because I don't know your partner's design or your husband's design, but like if you had that center colored in, if somebody did, it would mean that they're impacting you with their energy. Meaning that like, if say he has that root center colored in and defined, it means that he's projecting a stress out into the world and you're amplifying and taking it all in. I don't know whether that's the dynamic that's happening, but it's really useful in partnership to be like, I'm impacting you with my feelings. I'm taking in your stress. Like it just like helps us really understand what's happening in dynamics and just like how to not take it personally and just work with it like in a much more sustainable way. Yeah. And I love that you brought it up with, with partnerships and what about, I know you do some group and team stuff as well. So what about with, with work? I mean, how, 
because lots of companies do, you know, Myers Briggs or different personality things, right? That they'll yeah. have you do a seminar and, and stuff. But I always find that they're a bit generic. I've, I've always had trouble with people bringing in personality tests and then really getting this report that they might use for the training and you get a color or a communication type or some label and then it sticks around the department or whatever for a week or so when people compare what type they are. Um, but I, I don't see, let's say, lasting impact or benefit. So how how can we bring this to the workplace more? Because I think that it would make a huge difference in understanding yeah. a, a boss or a coworker or yeah. So it, it it does make a huge difference. And I think that I got into human design because of that. You know, I came from a lot of dysfunctional teams and like not hugely dysfunctional, but just teams that like had great visions, had great people, but like no one really took the time to understand how one another worked. Um, and so there was just like, it wasn't very effective, you know? And so I think the magic of bringing human design into teams is like really understanding like how to work with each person. Like this person like might not like a lot of meetings. This person like needs to be communicated to with specific questions, give them options. And they'll always know like this person needs to be invited in. Like this person like has tremendous energy to like use up each day. Whereas this person like needs blocks of rest. Like it just really helps us know how to leverage people and how to support one another. Um, and so I, I love doing teamwork. You know, I think my first intention is just to kind of really like give people the language to kind of really understand how each person operates best. And then there's obviously ongoing work to kind of like when moments of tension or challenge come up to kind of really explore what's happening. Um, but I do think it's like such a beautiful reminder that like we often feel tension when we want someone else to kind of be like us or be different than what they are. And I think human design is so beautiful and just like reminding us that we all are like wired to operate so differently. And the more we really trust that, the more flow we find. Yeah, I love that we are different and how do we trust that and then also have some clarity on what what those different operations are, right? Because I can acknowledge, hey, we both operate differently, but then what, right? And you're giving yeah. really practical, okay, what, how does each person operate best? How do we leverage that to work together when one person yeah. needs rest and the other person can be on all the time or one totally. person's a doer and the other one's more visionary? Like how do we, how do we mesh those things together? So I totally. Think it also just reminds us that like we need each other you know it's like I it, whatever the type is like if I sit with the team that's purely one type like it's just clear that there are gaps you know like we just like need all these different energies in a team and then we need to know how to like actually work with them it's the same as in a family it's the same as in partnership you know it's just like it's really like taking the time to be like with these people that I'm spending so much time with like how can I really start to understand how they work and so that we can honor our differences and we're not like taking our difference is personally or making each other wrong for it but i find work to be such a potent application because we often spend at least like pre-covid we a lot of in-person stuff less so now but like we spend a lot of time with the people that we work with you know um and also like i think that when we know how to work together we're way more effective in creating things for the world because there's a lot less energy that's kind of sucked up on like interpersonal dynamics. Yeah, I love that, especially for people that might be on the efficiency minded side of things. Like, why would we spend a day doing this? Or why would we spend the money on it? It's like, well, because you're going to save a lot of money down the road with conflicts and inefficiencies in communication totally. and, and work allocation. I mean, huge delegation, I think is the biggest thing with new managers and leaders like who do I delegate this to and how who can I trust and we often rely on our senses right oh I trust this person but it's like if there's a way to delegate tasks in a more aligned fashion that'd be amazing right totally. again, I know this person will not only just do it but they'll thrive on it that's a totally. huge difference in the quality work so and also people will be happier yeah yeah which is I mean hey the great resignation there's no question that people if you're not happy in your work you're not staying for for long and we won't give it our best shot so it's definitely an important yeah. piece and i i wonder on on that around energy because you said you know our type sort of needs breaks but other types need can, can just kind of go for it how would you I guess the, the blanket question is like, okay, well, how are you feeling and check in on your energy? But if we went a step further, like, is there something that either for each type or a way that we can look at our energy and really be aware? Because definitely for me, I know it's like, 
I've just got to hustle and keep pushing. And then I know that that's wrong. Right. When I, like, I don't feel good if I just keep pushing and pushing, I can do it, totally. but then I'll burn out. <laughs> so, um, yeah. How, how do we kind of relate to that? Especially when I think there's an expectation in the market place the workplace where it's like you have to be in nine to five or at least get things done right you can't yeah. go you can't go three weeks and not do anything or you know like that's just not okay so how do how does each type manage their energy to be able to show up for others because I mean if you have a business you have to be consistent you have to to some degree right you have to show up consistently but yeah. how do you do that at the flip side of needing breaks and moderating your energy yeah, I think that so with projectors, you know, and again, there's going to be so much more nuance underneath the type le- level. But I think that like for projectors, the idea is more generally is that our energy ebbs and flows. And so like and we're not really meant to be these consistent doers and any attempts at that will likely burn us out. So I think on a more practical level, like building space and rest into your days is really useful. You know, like I wouldn't plan things back to back to back. I would also allow in support. I would also like hone in on the things that you offer the most value on, like whether it's working with people or marketing and like really eventually bring on support for the rest. And I know in terms of like consistency, you know, so much of being a projector is sharing because people have to find you. And I know that if I often create a structure of like, this is like the number of times I'd like to share a week. And then I just like, I don't, I don't do it every day. You know, I just kind of then ebb and flow and see when it's, when I'm inspired to share. Um, so again, I would just like not expect your energy to be like super consistent, making things happen all the time and just try on this idea that so much of the gift you offer is in your perspective and how you see and not how much you can do. Then we've got manifestors and their energy ebbs and flows too, you know? And so I think as a manifestor, you might have a creative burst where you can make a lot happen. And then like over the course of a couple of days, a couple of weeks, a couple of hours, and then you really have to like rest and chill and kind of wait for the energy to like surge up again. And so again, like I would not try to consistently make things happen. Like I would honor those natural ebbs and flows. It's often in the ebbs, the next idea will come through. And often manifestors, like in terms of working, they just need freedom. And so ideally you would be in a position where you feel really free to kind of like set the terms of how you're doing things and when I would say manifesting generators and not all manifesting generators and generators just like can do, do, do all day long. Again, there's some, some will want to ebb and flow. It, It depends on other parts of their design, but like as a manifesting generator or a generator, like what allows you to rest well at night is to feel that you have fully used up your energy during the day in a really satisfying way. And that could be what you're working on, who you're spending time with, how you move your body, but you can kind of drop into bed with like the the satisfied fulfillment and then kind of wake up energized again. And so I would really consider like, how are you using up your energy? And if you go to bed really restless, like, you know, ask yourself, like, have I really used it up in a satisfying way? You know, um, And then I would say manifesting generators specifically, you might kind of like to move your energy in between different things and have every day look a little bit different. And then I think finally for reflectors, like also ebb and flow, but like in a more general way, like as a reflector, like you might have a month where you feel like a manifesting generator and you can just make so much happen so quickly and you feel like absolutely on fire. And then like the next week you really want to rest and chill. So like I would honor where you are as much as possible and know that like, you're going to go through a course of a month where like, you're going to probably have different surges of energy on different days. Um, and then I would say as a reflector, one of the most powerful tools to really align yourself with like feeling good and creating the right opportunities is to be in the right physical space. So really kind of planting yourself around people and in spaces that are feeling good and knowing that that really is such a tremendous impact on your energy and can really kind of uplift you in such positive ways. Yeah, thank you. And I think with all of them, it sounds like all of them ebb and flow. To me, what I'm noticing is the question is maybe like the timeline of the ebb and flow almost because they all, everyone, the energy moves. It's not stagnant. So every right. every type, there's ebb and flow. But reflectors, like on a monthly theme basis, the generator, manifesting generator seems to be like on a daily kind of recharge basis. use it all on and then recharge yeah yeah and then a projector I'm, I'm hearing sort of weekly but like phase I would say daily yeah I think projector would be like instead of having a day where you're just like I'm gonna like work from nine to five it might be like 
I have a session from nine to 10 and then I'm going to take a break, you know, and then at 10 to 11, I'll do this thing. Like, it's just like creating a little bit more like spacious and ease into your days. Like when you feel, and I know that's not always feasible and I have hustled and continue to in so many ways in my life. So it's like a constant lesson, but like the more you allow in space and ease and rest, like often the better you will be at what you do. Yeah. So also, absolutely. So also a daily system, but with more spaciousness than perhaps the manifester, the manifesting generator. To... Yeah. And, and the manifester is a little bit different where it's like a, they could have this creative burst where they make something happen, like are bringing an idea to life that could like last weeks or could last days, you know what I mean? And then they have to like really like pull back and be alone. And so there is like, you know, it's, it's not always going to be the same cadence but it is kind of really noticing that of like really honoring the energy when it's there, when they really feel inspired to bring something to life, but also when the energy starts to like dwindle, really giving themselves permission to kind of pull back and be alone um, and kind of like allow the next idea to come through. Mm, yeah, so also sort of longer bursts of energy somehow versus a projector that's kind of ease, you keep hearing ease when you're sitting like, rest yeah. and ease rest and ease not this like huge burst that needs to because I noticed myself being in that space for personally I definitely will get on a, a train if something needs to get done and I'll I'll have those kind of more like longer bursts of time that I'm working but it yeah in the long run that doesn't make sense so it's just interesting I guess I'm really curious how you find people how we can know we're heading in the right direction. So one thing is noticing that energy, right? And noticing how we're feeling. And I know each type has sort of different feelings like uh, resentment yeah. or anger or, so would you say that's sort of the answer or what, how do we know that we're heading in the right direction? Because sometimes I feel really good kind of being in one of those longer spurts that I just like, I'm super empowered in the moment. I feel super excited about it, but it's after two weeks or three weeks where I'm like, Oh no, that was so not good. <laughs> yeah, I so. think that like, I think that like it is, it is how you're feeling. You know, it's like, does this feel good? Like, I think as projectors, we can be really vulnerable to just not knowing when to stop, and like, we can just end up burning out. You know, and so like, it really is about discovering a more sustainable way of working. But as you said, there are basically little signatures for each type that kind of reveal whether they're on track. And so that's a beautiful place to check in. Like to be on track as a projector is to feel success. And it doesn't have to be like financial or purely material success at all. It could just be like, wow, I feel like really recognized and I feel appreciated. And I feel like really treasured in my relationships and in my work, you know, and to be off track is to feel bitter, to feel on track as a generator or manifesting generator is to feel satisfied. It's like, you're dropping into bed and you're like, I just feel really satisfied by the way that I used up my energy today um, and fulfilled by it. And to be off track is frustrated for reflectors to be on track is to feel surprised. It's kind of this like surrender to the flow and really just like surprised and kind of in the magic of what's coming up and to be off track is disappointment. And then to be on track as a manifester is to feel peace. That often is also kind of the freedom to do as you please, launch your new ideas when you're inspired to take rest when you need and to be off track is to feel anger. And so these are very simple spectrums, but they're really useful ones because to be the, that signature that reveals whether we're on track is just like a reminder, like keep going, you know, you're right on track. And the, the off track signal is a bit more of like, let's just check in like something about the way that I'm showing up is not sustainable. So let me just kind of like get curious and see what's really showing up here. Yeah. I love those. I, I know they're simple and I think that's where people try to dig in and get more details, but I think that that already is so big I to be able to be aware of that every day is really totally a big piece of work. I think <laughs> for yes. me, at least, um, yeah. I know, I know that reflectors are, are super rare. What, I don't know if this is an appropriate question, but why, or what's, what's their deal? What are they? Yeah. I, I think that, um, you know, I think that we, it, it changes a little bit generation by generation. Like I think that there sometimes can be like different percentages coming in. Reflectors are about 1% of the population. Again, that's like obviously an imperfect number, but I think like when you think about it, like the majority of pop the population are generators and manifesting generators because like these are the doers, the ones that have such tremendous energy and life force to make things happen. If that was a really small percentage, I think that we would all suffer. You know, like we really need that creative vitality and energy. 
And projector is about 20% because they're the guides. They're really good at asking the right questions. Like again, if everyone was a guide here, that probably would be really unsustainable, you know? And then we've got the manifestors eight to 9%, like the ones that are here to kind of like initiate, innovate, disrupt. Again, can't have an entire population of disruptors. You know, we need people to kind of sustain and build. And then reflectors are the evaluators. So think of reflectors as like, there's one in a large group and they're kind of like sitting back, feeling it all and just mirroring back how things are going and offering kind of a very powerful perspective on like what's not working and how things could be improved. So I see them as a smaller percentage because like we kind of need like one in each group, you know, where they offer this like tremendous perspective and way of seeing things. Um, so, you know, and that's just the kind of me hypothesizing, but I just think that like, we all need each other. We all need the different types, but we play different roles. And I think those different roles, like are like some thrive when a lot of people in that role and then some like the reflector role kind of being the evaluator you often don't need a ton of them in one place yeah back i love it it's back to your point even on a team if you see a team with all sort of clustered into one type totally challenges emerge because you don't have it's all energy in one sense like it's all this ebb and flow of energy and so between our individual self but then also within a group like we're I think we're all interacting or playing off each other somehow. So we need those different types is what I'm hearing you say. Totally. Yeah. I think that we all need each other. And I think the more we like stop trying to be like other people and the more we, ex the less we expect others to be like us, like the more flow we find, you know? And so I think it's just like, it's so nice to remember that like, we just like all these types play a different role. And it's just about kind of like understanding people enough to really know how to work with them and support them. Yeah. Nice. And what about for you personally? I mean, I know you share about your story. So I, what, what's something you'd love people to know about your experience with human design or things that you're currently noticing or find important? Yeah, I mean, I think that, God, I just like, it's such a powerful relational tool. You know, I think that like understanding my own design and learning how to build a business according to that and living my life has been amazing. But what's almost been more powerful is using human design as a tool to better understand and love on the people around me. And my husband, who's different than me in every possible way, my sister, who like is a manifester, and I spent my whole life trying to like give her guidance that she was like not open to and really learned a lesson there. You know, my mom also manifested my dad, like friends, you know, I collaborators. Like, I just think that like, it's just given me such a new lens to look at my relationships in a way that has brought so much more kind of empathy and compassion and understanding and connection into them, you know? And so like, I think that that's, I think probably one of the most powerful pieces of my own journey. It's just like really taking the time to be like, how does this person operate? How can I support them in this, you know? And also like, where am I expecting, expecting them to like be like me, you know? And how can I like loosen that up and just be like a lot more open to like what feels like them? Yeah, nice, definitely helping helping to better understand and love on the people around you. I think that's so beautiful. That's all we all, I mean, we're such relational and connected beings. Like that's what we're, I think that's what we're here for at least for connection and relationship. So totally. Yeah. And it's just such an amazing tool and I don't have kids yet, but another amazing tool to like know how to then support your kids. Yeah. So how, if you've got something that comes to mind, what's an example of how you might do that? Something recent or powerful that comes to mind, like how you would bring human design in relationally to impact how you're, whatever, with your husband or, or your sister, you mentioned your mom, anyone, how, how do you yeah. find yourself kind of talking through that or how is it impacting in that situation? Yeah. I mean, such simple things like, you know, with my partner, who's a generator, like if I ask him like really open-ended questions, like he'll give me like, it's just like, he can envision all the possibilities. But if I like communicate with him by asking him really specific questions, like, do you need this for dinner or this? Like, do you like option A or option B? Like he'll immediately know. So like, I've just like learned how to communicate with him in a way that drops him into his gut and like helps him access his truth and doesn't get us like in this endless world of possibility. Like, I just know that I have to show him a thing and he'll know in the moment, which is so frustrating when it's like a no, but like when it's a yes, it's like such a full body. Yes. That it's always worth it. Um, my partner is also my business partner. And so like, it's really useful to know as a generator that like 
he really is so much powerful energy and he's lit up by what he's doing, you know? So really considering ways that I can like take things off his plate that he's not excited by and just kind of like seeing what is satisfying, you know, and what is feeling like the right use of his energy. So, and also that his decision-making is like his gut feeling in the moment. So really kind of being able to tune into when like that's coming out versus when it's not. So it's like, now it's such a lens through which I look at it, everything, but I think it's really um, made communication and decision-making so much easier because it really has helped me understand how different we are in that way and what we need from each other and how to kind of honor each other's processes. Well, yeah. How do you, what's a decision that you've made recently where you honor that? Because those are two, I mean, just like you said with us, right? Like for me, I definitely, if I'm in a space or there's a certain thing to do or place to go or any decision for me, I'm like, yep. Like I just, I can, I can feel that so instantly. Uh, whereas yeah. let's say if you need to wait a couple of days, how do you ebb and flow with, with that practically speaking, like how? Yeah, I think that we just, we honor, you know, there's sometimes where it's like, I don't have clarity yet. And we'll go with this gut. But I think in general, like if we're, if we're doing a thing, like we just adopted these two rescues, you know? And I think that like, I like, it took me a little bit of I was so excited and then I like had to really like feel into it for a while that I like wanted to do this, you know? And then when we went, we just like, we did it. But I think that like, it was just like honoring that our paces might be really different and it can like cause a little bit of friction when like, he just knows that I'm like still waiting to be clear. But I think like when we're making collective decisions, like both coming in from the angle of like, this feels right to us is always worth it. So I think that I've just learned to be like, it's amazing that he knows right now but I don't yet and like I just have to like take my time to to access my own knowing because I know the right decisions for clear the ones that both feel right you know and like it's just I, I don't I'm not clear yet you know so I think it's it's been about giving myself that permission to kind of take the time without making myself wrong for it yeah I love that and for people that do need to take some time how do you access that knowing how what's that look like what's that process because I can think of some people in my life where they definitely want to journal and reflect and take time. Um, and for somebody like me that knows right away, I'm just like, well, I, I don't, I don't have, I don't know how to access that knowing. So, or I guess I do it right away. So how do we access that knowing for ourselves if we need? Yeah. If you are an emotional authority or wait for clarity, it's just around sleeping on things. And it's not about like sleeping on things so you can like give yourself all this time to feel like to discuss it and to write it down but it's more just like seeing how a decision feels over time like my experience is I'll see how it feels <clears throat> as my initial instinct and then I'll check back in with myself a day or two later and be like am I still excited you know like does it still feel expansive like does it still feel fun and there are a lot of times where I'm like no it was so exciting yesterday my my excitement has dissipated because I was just like on an emotional high but then also there are a lot of times where I'm like it still feels really good, you know? And so I just know that like the right decisions for me or anyone who's emotional is like the decisions that really feel right over time that you love over time. And it's not like maybe a hundred percent certainty, but it's more like it just continues to feel good. So I wouldn't put pressure on yourself to like take that time to like write a pro con list, but more just to like feel into it and make sure it like remains feeling good, remains kind of like a, this just feels like a good use of my energy. Yeah, I love that. I almost, I almost somehow resonate with it too, I guess for me sometimes. So what's it about if somebody's really impulsive, but then they, I find myself sometimes sleeping on things and you and what I'm hearing from you is no, like you should just drop in and like make that choice. So how, what, what's, what happens if we're on the flip side? So for example, someone like you is making really impulsive decisions or someone like me is humming and hawing and kind of like I'm not sure like I've had those moments for yeah. sure where I'm like oh I don't know and that feels really off for me right to like hum and haw and stuff it's like no I yeah so so what if we're what if we're living on the other side what if we're not in alignment but we're doing the opposite I mean a lot of us are not living in alignment so it's all practice I would say for you clarity is meant to come in the now so I would like your design is about receiving an instinct about something and then acting on it um if you don't receive an instinct or something doesn't feel clear, then don't act, you know, take your time. But what I see with people that with designs like you is they might have an instinct and then they don't act on it and then they talk themselves out of it, you know? And so I think so much of the work is just being courageous enough to like follow it when it comes. So I would just reflect on whether or not the like, like humming and hawing is coming from the fact that like, you're just not trusting the instinct that really did arrive or whether like, it's just not a yes. And so like, you're just not acting because like you didn't get a clear hit that it was the right thing. 
Yeah, there. Thank you. I I so appreciate it. I hope everyone listening also has yeah. learned a lot. And I'm just grateful for you making yourself seen and known again. As I said in the beginning, I super admire that. It's something that I think we all need to do in some degree. And I think you do it so authentically and beautifully. So I'm, I'm just grateful for you doing that. It's such a great example for, for me and I think many others. So I know we talked about if people want to work with you or get to know get to know your work, I'll post some links, but what's sort of the next step if someone wants to be in touch and learn more? Yeah, so I share a lot on Instagram at Erin Claire Jones. Um, and also if you want to get started, I would say probably the best place is something called the Blueprint, which is like a 55 plus page book to your design. It kind of walks you through the most important pieces, everything we talked about today and more in a really practical, empowering way that doesn't require that you like know what all the gates or anything means. Um, and you can use the discount code lead today. Is that what we decided? Yeah. Um, and then I also offer sessions, individual private, sorry, individual partnership family. And those are all on my website, erinclairjones.com. And then you can get the blueprint at humandesignblueprint.com. Nice. Thank you so much. And I'll, I'll put that all in the show notes. So if anyone's feeling called to go for that, just click, click away and use that discount code. And Aaron, thank you so much. I hope we can see you again on the show, but I, it's been such a pleasure to learn from you today. My pleasure. Thank you so much for having me.